typed and untyped Python are different languages. At least, that's the opinion of Tin on the website threeofones.com. He's written an article explaining why he thinks that Python is actually two languages now, and why that's such a good thing. This video is going to be a breakdown of Tin's article, interspersed with my thoughts on the topic, based on my experience using Python in industry for both software engineering and data engineering. So what are type hints in Python? Support for type hints in Python were first added in Python 3.5. Type hints are optional and not checked at runtime, but they're used by editors and static type checkers like PyWrite and MyPy to make sure you're not trying to do operations on the wrong data types. For example, type hints can prevent you passing in an int where you expect to call the upper method like you might on a string. Some people in the Python community can feel quite strongly about this topic. Some are adamantly for type hints and the potential to make code more safe. Others argue that they go against the nature of Python and should never be used anywhere. Tin thinks that most people, however, are in the middle and don't know when they should or shouldn't be using type hints. Let's talk about a model of thinking about code, infrastructure versus business logic. Tin argues that there are two types of Python code, infrastructure code and business logic code. Infrastructure code is commonly found in libraries and abstracts away the difficult tasks from developers, such as connecting to a database or communicating with the operating system to schedule async code. Business logic is the more day-to-day -day application code that most software developers will be writing. This is the stuff that allows customers to purchase products online or pay for their entertainment subscription. For those already working in software development, business code is what your project manager wants you to write and infrastructure code is what they hope someone else has already written for you. For the most part, I agree with this model, though Tin admits that there are times where some business code will contain some infrastructure code that makes interacting with your proprietary system somewhat easier. So when should you be using type hints? And when shouldn't you? Tin reckons that type hints are mostly good for business logic code. Usually, you aren't doing anything too out of the ordinary and are only passing a few types of data into your functions. You generally know the data format coming in from the user, and type hints can help you make sure you haven't made silly errors in the code base. However, to support your type hinting efforts in your business logic, you expect the infrastructure code you call out to to also have type hints available. This brings us nicely onto the next topic. In the article, Tin argues that infrastructure code is often too complicated to be type hinted everywhere. The author of your database library doesn't know the schema of your database, so they can't type hint all the data coming into their code. They would just end up with massive piles of any type hints all over the code base. And in these cases, it's often easier to not have type hints at all. However, users expect type hints. So what's the solution? Tin suggests that infrastructure code developers should type in at the boundaries where the API is exposed. This makes it much easier for the users of the library to work with. Again, I agree a lot with this. However, there are other cases where type hints aren't always useful. When you're prototyping or exploring, it can take extra time to add type hints and define types you want in your code, which can slow down the development cycle. Also, you don't always know the type of data coming in. I worked as a data engineer on a data stack and data types can change as requirements change. You'll also see that untyped Python is used more in data science and analytics as there are lots of C-based libraries that can't be strongly typed. However, this can make it difficult to take models and make them production ready, as code can be more difficult to navigate. Data scientists don't typically think about code structure in the same way as software engineers, so it can be harder to find your way around their code base. Also, lots of data science libraries don't take into account type hinting. I've worked with the stats models library, which tends to have wrappers around its results when you have a model, which can make things difficult to type hint. Also, not all infrastructure code should be untyped. Often, untyped is great when you're working with network or IO where you can't guarantee the data coming in. However, typed can work really well for libraries that abstract certain tasks. My Quiffin library, which is used for passing financial files, is typed the whole way through. It makes it easier for both users to use and for me to develop, and type checkers have prevented a few dumb bugs from leaking into the code. At the end of the article, Tin compares the Python type system to other languages. Tin argues that the JavaScript and TypeScript split is similar to the typed and untyped Python split. However, Tin also argues that some type systems can be too strict, like Java, and can make writing infrastructure code very tricky. He also mentions Rust as having an interesting approach with their macro system, as you can have semi-untyped code, but for the most part, code is very strongly typed with Rust's excellent type system. What are your thoughts on this debate? Please leave a comment down below and I'll leave a poll on the video. I'd love to see which side of this people are on. If you like this sort of video where we talk more about Python philosophy, please like and subscribe because I'd love to do more of them in the future. And if you want to watch something similar, why not take a look at this video I did about object-oriented programming versus functional programming in Python.